Hey YouTube, Bob here. Welcome to the next edition of my Nintendo Unbox Playlist. And in this one, we're going to take a look at The Legend of uh, Zelda. Wait, didn't we take a look at that one already? Yes, we did. In my last unboxing video, we looked at The Legend of Zelda, but for the Nintendo Entertainment System as a cartridge release. The Legend of Zelda, to my knowledge, and uh, my knowledge certainly isn't all-encompassing, but uh, this is one of the few, if only, titles to receive a dual release, both in cartridge form and in disc system form. So this is the disc version released for the Famicom, and uh, I believe that the disc version was released first, because one of the main reasons, there were two main reasons for the disc system, which were uh, to reduce production costs, because at that time, in the mid and late 80s, uh, prices of chips for cartridges were at an all-time high. So they came up with the disc technology to kind of mitigate, uh, mitigate that cost of the chips. And also, unlike cartridges at that time, this disc format offered read and write capabilities. And given that The Legend of Zelda was such a big game, one of the biggest ever released for a home console, it certainly needed a way to save. But luckily, by the time Legend of Zelda was actually released, the prices of the chips began to come down for the cartridges, and they had developed a way to save on cartridges using internal batteries, which kind of rendered the disc versions of games not obsolete, but they certainly were vulnerable to piracy and other issues, that they weren't durable and they would fail, and it just actually turned out that the uh, cartridge format uh, was more viable than the disc format. But uh, Nintendo rectified that later on by also having a cartridge release of The Legend of Zelda on the Famicom. Uh, but this is the disc version that we're going to take a look at here. And right away you can see we're getting a little bit of different art here. This background I've never seen in any of the, uh, the U.S. Legend of Zelda uh, artwork, but I have seen this link before. And we've got the Hyrule Fantasy, Zerudano no Densets, which is uh, written here. Um, in katakana and some kanji that I uh, certainly can't read. But uh, typically uh, with the disc system you get this uh, outer plastic kind of case sealed with a little discoon, which is, this has been folded over here so you can't really see it all that well unfortunately. This is a sticker to seal it at retail. Mimicking that Nintendo sticker that was on some original black box games. These weren't shrink wrapped, but you've got a little Discoon mascot, which was the um, the mascot for the disc system here. But this is just kind of the outer protective case. And then once you take the contents out, you get an even harder plastic case here that the disc resides in. We've got the same artwork here. And then a little bit of information on the back with this A and B, letting you know that this is a two-sided disc. Not all discs for the disc system had two sides. And one of the main reasons for that is uh, not only the saving, but also the sheer content of this game and the size it required. So uh, a lot of the, you know, the, the dual sides here was for saving and uh, the information that they needed to store for the game, the ROM portion of the game. And here we've got a little bit of a warning card. Definitely cannot read that. And then here we have the instruction manual here, which has this nice little pull tab here. So when everything is kind of packaged in here, uh, it's easy to get started pulling things out. Very, very nice aesthetic touch there. You can pull things out. So we're going to take a look first, before we get into the manual here, at the actual game. The cartridge or disc. And there's quite a few things going on here. We've got uh, this little insert that kind of reminds me of an audio cassette here. Some instructions here for handling the disc and how to insert it perhaps into the disc system itself. And that was what we saw on the outside. And then we take a look at this little paper sleeve here, very similar to the uh, paper sleeves you might have seen a five and a quarter inch floppy disc uh, for a computer um, back in the 80s but definitely in a smaller size here because this is the disc for the disc system here. It has a very nice custom label here for side A and then on the back side B. 
And something of note uh, as far as the disk system disks and uh, their kind of propriet proprietary format is we have this Nintendo logo embossed in the plastic here. But it looks like the I here and then this N, they go a lot deeper into the plastic than do the rest of the letters. And that's kind of a, a keying feature here. Um, and it allows these uh, kind of notches to line up with notches that are in the inside of the slot. And um, this kind of uh, distinguishes a licensed Nintendo disc from a non-licensed or pirated uh, disc that was created by a third party. But uh, so this one's two sided when you first put it in it loads up the title screen with a little message right away saying hey flip it over to side B so you take it out and then you flip it over to side B and then you hit start and it's able to load up your game files and then a little bit later on in the game once you get through probably about half of it it has you flip it over again because the rest of the content of the ROM portion is stored on the other side of the disc so you actually had to do a little bit of flipping kind of reminds me of audio cassettes and uh, vinyl LPs in order to get all the content. And so that brings us to the final piece here. Let's take a look first at this uh, green pull tab that um, is attached to this card, which is all in uh, hiragana and kanji, it looks like. got some katakana on there, too. So sadly, I cannot read that. I've got no idea what it is. If you do, certainly let me know in the comments. Nothing on the back side here. But I was commenting how, uh, how thick the instruction manual was for the cartridge release of this game in North America. Well, <laughs> that doesn't compare to the girth of this booklet here. And it's very nice uh, fit and finish here. Got a little bit of a cardboard, um, cardboard outer cover, which is nice. And then the pages are kind of uh, matte print. And looks like we've got uh, some do's and don'ts as far as handling your disc on the inside cover. As well as some additional labels here for your disc. I can't imagine uh, why you would need extra ones because the same ones already came affixed to the disc itself. But what I am noticing here is that there are some additional uh, Legend of Zelda logo stickers. And some stickers of Link in Action, which is actually really, really cool. I don't know that the cartridge version of this game for the Famicom uh, came with uh, similar stickers like this Disk System version did. But turning it over, we've got a um, table of contents for sure, going through and letting us know what we're going to be reading in this manual. And just like the North American version, we have the, um, we've got this kind of claymation aesthetic uh, for the overworld on this map here, which I've always enjoyed so much. The only negative, though, is it doesn't quite fold open as easily. You don't get, like, the full the full picture like you do in the U.S. manual, which um, opens quite a bit easier, and then the pages, of course, are a bit longer. So some instructions here about how to load your disk into the disk system. And going through the title screen and the disk system loading up. Information for saving your game. This is so 80s looking with uh, these abstract shapes and little color splotches here and there. Love that aesthetic. So more information about saving. And how to use the controller it looks like. Link takes control. I think they use the same graphic in this portion of the manual about controls in the North American version. Things about the subscreen and the overworld screen. Powering up your sword. Yeah, if you saw my last video, which by the way, if you didn't, I will link it in the description for this one. We're seeing the exact same artwork that we did in the North American cartridge version of the game. We've got the actual sketches and then the pixel art itself taken from screenshots. All the different items in the game and how the Triforce fits together. And if I remember from the last video, pretty soon we're going to be heading into the bestiary section where we will probably have images of, um, yeah, we've got the uh, artwork and then we've got the pixel renderings of how they actually turned out in the game. So these are all the overworld creatures. Then it looks like we're heading into the labyrinths here, level one. 
Yep, we probably remember that from my last video, what the uh, labyrinths were supposed to be represented, these symbols and creatures here. Very abstract on the map screens themselves. And then we get into the bestiary here for all the underground baddies. But again, we've got both the original artwork and then the pixel renderings of them. Lots of text here. Looks like we're starting with a little bit of a hint section. What to do on that very first screen? Well, do the only thing you can. Head towards what looks like a door. Little opening in the cave there. And then some tips and tricks here for some of the first screens that you come across. And then we saw this as well. Once you finish level one, it kind of shows you the relationship of level two to level one and where they both lie on the map. It gives you kind of a hint of where to go and what to do. Now here's all that original artwork we saw with the backstory and how Ganon, you know, had captured the Triforce and was holding Zelda. So this portion of the booklet was actually moved to the beginning for the North American version. So kind of an interesting change there, but still retains all that beautiful artwork. Although not quite as big, everything's been uh, scaled down a little bit to be accommodated in this smaller booklet. And again, it looks like we've got some more instructions for what not to do to your disc. Don't touch the actual film. Don't put it by a magnet. Don't step on it. Don't, what are, what are those? Are those rocks? I'm not sure what that is, but it looks like, again, stay away from the film portion of it. And then don't expose too moisture or humidity. And then a little bit of a table here, kind of outlining what all of the different error codes you could get when the disc goes to read information. Sometimes there, uh, you know, the information gets corrupt and then you're kind of out of luck and it needs to be wiped or uh, you're just uh, out of luck completely. But then on the back, just some copyright information. And there goes Link marching off into the sunset. So all in all, pretty much the same game except with some enhanced audio and different sound effects because the uh, disc system had its uh, had a different sound chip in it so there were some enhanced sounds this of course had the microphone on the second controller of the Famicom so you could scream into it um, you know to make uh, the polls voice. I think it was the polls voice if I remember correctly uh, no actually that was one of the oh my gosh which boss was it let me find it here underground baddies where are they are they even listed here or me yeah, i was the pulse voice i was right it's the one with the huge ears you scream into your microphone in order to get them to shrink to a smaller form i think I'm having a hard time remembering so that you can actually attack it we had to do other things in our version of the game but all in all just another iteration of the original legend of zelda but like i said it would later be released in cartridge form once that became a more viable format for Nintendo. But I hope you enjoyed this uh, installment of Nintendo Unboxed, and please do stay tuned for the next one. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.